some of us lost properties because Honorable Koiburi lied that we received two million so that we could vote for the finance bill. Mr. Speaker, I'm asking one question. Is Honorable Koiburi ready to go back to the same church and apologize from the same church that he lied? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we must, we must speak the truth and tell each other the truth. Is Honorable Koibori ready to go to the same church and admit on the same pulpit that he's, he lied and he incriminated these members of parliament, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Honorable Ruku. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, Honorable Koimbori is insincere, even with his apology, is insincere. Even the way, even the way the letter is uh, wanted, Mr. Speaker, um, we have we have lost faith with people of the Republic of Kenya because of the lie of Honorable Koimbori, and I think we should not even call him honourable because he has proved he is not honorable. If he can be able to lie in front of the church that members who voted yes received two million on his feet in front of clergy, then I think, Honorable Speaker, we need to prescribe a very harsh punishment yes. of Honorable Koimbori. And before we do that, we need to do exactly what Honorable um, Deputy Speaker, I say it to prescribe his apology in clear terms so that we can decide whether we are going to forgive him or not. Mr. Speaker, otherwise, as a member who voted yes, I am not ready to forgive Honorable Koimbori for I. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Wangare. Thank you. Order. Thank you. Order, Honorable Members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, the apology is tender to the people who voted yes in this yes. house. Yes. And what we have suffered, Mr. Speaker, cannot be even be quantified in a single letter, Mr. Speaker. Many members have been harassed for no reason. And Mr. Speaker, one thing that Honorable Koimbori, and I'm very sad because I knew the father. The father is from my constituency, he was a very honest man. I don't know who became of this Honorable Koimbori, Mr. Speaker because he lied through the teeth in the pulpit, in the pulpit and with no shame. Mr. Speaker, what we need, even as we go to forgive Honorable Koimbori, we must set a precedent in this house, Mr. Speaker, that you cannot just say things outside there, incriminating members of parliament, incriminating the whole house, Mr. Speaker, and go, get away with it, Mr. Speaker. We must have him pay damages, but more importantly, we must have him taken action against by the Speaker, Powers and Privileges Committee, Mr. Speaker, there must be clear so that next time any member who would like to drag the names of members under the bus to look good, Mr. Speaker, then they will think twice. And Mr. Speaker, one thing Honorable Koimbori must realize, he may have been doing this to look good. By the way, the whole house, one is rotten, all of us will be rotten, including him, Mr. Speaker. So I hope that this will be a lesson, and the precedent that will be set from your desk, Mr. Speaker, will discourage others from going the route that Honorable Koimbori has gone. It is a shame, and he should be ashamed of himself. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Owen Bayer. Honorable Speaker. You know, Honorable Speaker, I come from a priestly lineage. And uh, the Bible is very clear that forgiveness is divine. Now, if the forgiveness is divine, upon uh, seeking for it, we are obliged that we forgive. And uh, Honorable Speaker, in Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, he says that sometimes punishment may not be the execution of the crime. But more importantly, it is that the person, I'm sure, Orbo Kiyomburi, within the time that he has lived with his guilty, he has atoned his sins. And because he has atoned his sin, and that forgiveness is divine, I personally forgive him and request this house to forgive him. I thank you, Orbo Speaker.
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Indeed, it is regrettable uh, what has been going around, but I also want to congratulate the Honorable Member for being a gentleman and apologizing. We have more important business to work on. And uh, just to my brother, like Ruku, there are more atrocities that have been committed in this house, including taking people's signatures, and we don't know where you took them. That was more serious. So, Honorable Speaker, yes, the Honorable Member made a mistake. He to has owned up the mistake Boka, and apologized. Boka, Thank you, Honorable Member. Two wrongs don't make a right. Forgive him and proceed, Honorable Speaker. We have more important business for this house. Kenyans are watching at us. Mr. Speaker, let's rest this matter. Asante sana, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, the standing orders of this house does not describe what an apology should look like in this house. The Honorable Member has actually apologized. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter if he got the figures wrong or if he got the facts wrong, but he's apologized. And on that note, Mr. Speaker, I think the onus is on us to forgive him as a house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me begin first by appreciating uh, what has been said by other members about forgiveness and uh, commend the Honorable Koimbori. Because we are all men and women. And I say men in the parlance of the Bible, men and women. And we are honorable men and women. And we ought to carry, Honorable Speaker, I beg you protect me from the Honorable Betty. I say, Honorable Speaker, that we are seen and viewed to be honorable men and women. And it is perceived, or it should be, that we are among the very best in our society because our people elected us as among the best of the people in their constituencies. And I'm sure even the people of Juja elected the Honorable Koimburi, believing he was one of the best among us, the people of Juja. And therefore, he has been very magnanimous to apologize. And the book of 1 John 1, 9. The, book, the good book tells us that if we confess our sins, he, meaning God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I think, Honorable Order. Speaker, I have listened to what uh, members across the aisle have said that if you seek forgiveness, you shall be forgiven. And I must commend the Honorable Koimbori for seeking forgiveness for his unrighteous ways of things he said about members that were not there. But the book also tells us, if you confess. Yes. And I, when I listened to Honorable Koimbori, I heard him say that he said things that he now knows are untrue, and he knew they were untrue even at the time he said. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, the fact that the Bible tells us if we confess, we shall be forgiven by the Almighty God. And we are all followers of Christ and followers of the Almighty God, Allah, even for those of us who are from the Muslim Islamic faith. Honorable Speaker, if you can forgive me from these ones who are saying we are not God. Of course, I know we are not God. But we all believe in God. And I want to believe in this house, Honorable Speaker, we are men and women of great faith. 
men and women who are Christians and others who are very good Muslims, who believe in the Almighty God. And therefore, being followers of Christ like myself, I have absolutely no problem as a person in forgiving the Honorable Koimbori for his inequities. However, to protect the institution of Parliament, Honorable Speaker, to protect the dignity of this House, to protect the dignity of innocent members of Parliament who are seen as sellouts for either 2 million shillings or 2,000 shillings or whatever the amount was, Honorable Speaker, then I would beg that we handle this matter with a little bit more care so that tomorrow I do not stand up and accuse a member of parliament who votes this way or the other of having received bribes, knowing what I am saying is untrue. More worrying, Honorable Speaker, and I would urge you, Honorable Speaker, to ask the Honorable Koimbori to stand in his place. Because if you seek forgiveness, please do so with clean hands. When the Honorable Koimbori wrote that letter last week, Honorable Speaker, that letter was delivered to your office in the evening, a copy was delivered to my office, and a copy, I think, to the leader of minority, because they were copied. And I would have wanted to hear the Honorable Koimbori confirm if indeed what he says, he was the author of this letter. This letter was delivered by a staff member in his office, whom he knows, and I don't want to name him because he's not here, but the Honorable Koimbori knows his staff member who delivered that letter. The letter was stamped in my office. Unfortunately, the person who stamped it received, put one stamp upside down on the copy that he came with, that he was to return with. And he asked that it be stamped properly, facing up, and it was stamped. That is the letter that circulated on social media last week. The Honorable George Koimbori, on his social media platform, specifically on his Facebook page, stamped the same letter fake and said it is fake news. I will therefore have been more convinced to believe